According to newly released climate data, the global levels of methane, which is one of the most potent greenhouse gases, has climbed to record levels in the atmosphere in 2021. This is in fact the second consecutive year that methane levels have reached record highs. And this is unsurprising because levels counted in the atmosphere are cumulative. So as emissions continue, the record will be broken every consecutive year. Methane is the most powerful, potent greenhouse gas emitted by human activity after carbon dioxide. Including natural sources, the list is topped by water vapor, which is the most powerful greenhouse agent in the atmosphere, ahead of even carbon dioxide. The latest news follows news of scientists saying that we're going to cross the threshold of emissions for irreversible 1.5 degree Celsius rise in the next three years. Given that methane heats up the atmosphere much faster in the shorter term than carbon dioxide does, this unfortunately is not very good news. Where is methane getting released in record amounts from? Primarily human activity from oil and natural gas extraction, coal mining, industries, livestock and decaying waste in landfills in that order. Methane's lifetime in the atmosphere is much shorter than carbon dioxide's. It remains in the air just for about 12 to 15 years, maybe up to two decades, by which time methane molecules are broken down and degraded into water and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide itself persists in the atmosphere for over a hundred years. But methane molecules are 25 times more efficient at trapping heat than carbon dioxide is over a hundred year period and globally nearly 70 percent of all methane comes from human activity methane is the primary component of natural gas and it is emitted during extraction production processing refinement storage transportation transmission distribution and nearly every other stage in the process of using natural gas the same goes for extraction of crude oil as well and for coal mining. Industrial equipment also spews a lot of methane into the atmosphere. At present, the atmospheric levels are over 1900 parts per billion or approximately over 400 parts per million, triple of what it was in the atmosphere during the pre-industrial level just about 150 years ago. We also now think that because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and so many other countries' dependency on Russian oil and gas, other natural gas alternatives will start to be explored, possibly even newer ones over the coming years, which will lead to even more methane emissions and rapid and steep warming of the atmosphere very quickly in the short term because Russia is already still the second largest producer of natural gas and will continue producing it. But there's more though. A major source of future methane emissions is predicted to be the melting permafrost. As Siberia melts, it is going to release trapped gases from the ice, a large portion of which is methane. Some readings are already showing a spike in microbial methane production as compared to fossil fuel extraction. We can tell the difference by looking at the carbon isotopes present within methane molecules. Methane is mostly made up of carbon-12, but there's also some carbon-13 present. Microbial methane has less carbon-13 than industrial production or fossil fuels. But this spike in microbial production does not mean that the source is only the permafrost or natural wetlands or other natural microbial activity. A major source of microbial production is human activity in the form of livestock rearing. We do keep hearing about gases expelled by cows and other animals that we rear for food and large-scale industrial farming is a huge and rising contributor to atmospheric emissions by humans. And this, of course, spells disaster, these rising record levels of methane emissions. We already know things that we can anticipate. Sea level rise, more increased and more intense extreme weather events like cyclones, more intense rainfall with more floods and landslides, longer and hotter summers with each passing year, 
and of course all of this is indirectly leading to a large-scale mass exodus of people in the longer term moving away from the equatorial regions which will start to get engulfed in water wars. These scenarios are not too far away given the rate at which the atmosphere and the sea surface is warming. So with more intense heating ability and steadily rising concentrations of methane emissions, these climate effects will also worsen unpredictably and dangerously in the immediate future. But there are some things that can be done immediately to curb methane emissions because we already know what the primary sources are. Methane levels are now not going to fall for another couple of decades even if we stop emissions today. So it is imperative for us to act because these emissions are cumulative. What gets emitted today is added on to what is already in the atmosphere. And so if these emissions are not stopped immediately, these effects are going to exponentially worsen.